Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this is a Pulsar. Today I wanted to discuss some of the recent discoveries and most recent findings when it comes to Pulsars and of course some of the questions that this created for scientists but most importantly what it's going to lead to in the next few years. Let's discuss Pulsars and Neutron Stars and welcome to Wodemat. Honestly, pulsars have to be some of the most fascinating objects in the universe. Back in 1967, when Jocelyn Bell was working for Cambridge as a grad student, completely by accident, she discovered unusual pulsations in her data. Radio pulsations that were happening extremely regularly every 1.337 seconds. And within only a year, this discovery led to roughly around 20 new pulsars discovered around the night skies. But explaining what pulsars were took a little bit longer. It actually took a lot of theoretical mathematics to discover that this was caused by an extremely tiny object known as a neutron star. And these neutron stars were then officially confirmed as an actual object existing everywhere in the universe. And the only reason that neutron stars made the most sense here is because the scientists back then knew that no star can actually turn on and turn off its luminosity with such periodicity and produce such extreme observations. So a really tiny spinning object was the only answer. And the only tiny object that was theoretically possible was of course a neutron star that was back then very mathematical and purely theoretical. Which of course explained a lot of the features they were observing. And so today we know that this is the only reasonable explanation here. A larger spinning object turning into a very small spinning object means that the tiny object is going to spin really really fast. Which is pretty much what we're observing with all of the pulsars as well. At the same time, theoretically we know that so-called neutron degenerate gas should also exist just like the electron degenerate gas exists. And we've known about this one, the white dwarfs, for a very long time. So this here would be the natural progression to the next state, which is of course predicted in the quantum physics as well. And since then, up until today, we've discovered over 3,000 different neutron stars, and most of them are pulsars. Simply because pulsars are much, much easier to see, most neutron stars are invisible because they don't actually produce these pulsations. And although we thought we understood pulsars, how they form, and what kind of pulsars there are, one of the recent papers presents us with a new pulsar that was just discovered that suggests our classification and our ideas about pulsars were not all entirely correct. First of all, how do we classify pulsars in general prior to this paper? Let's start with, I guess, the neutron stars. Currently, we believe there are three different types of neutron stars. They can either be magnetars, which would be the most powerful magnets in the universe, and these are of course neutron stars that are just exceptionally magnetically strong, and some of these magnetars do actually possess the ability to become pulsars as well. So some magnetars can be pulsars. Some neutron stars can also be just radio quiet and quiet in other frequencies as well, especially if they're much older and have nothing around them. Those ones are obviously more difficult to find and see, so they're for the most part theoretical. And then we have the very big category of pulsars, and this can be a lot of different types of objects. Generally speaking, they're usually divided into three categories. We have accretion-powered pulsars, which are usually the ones like you see right here. They get their power from accreting a lot of matter from a nearby star or any other object. We then have magnetically-powered pulsars, which are magnetars that are pulsating as well, and get all of their power by slowly draining the magnetic field from within and releasing it as these large pulses. But the most commonly known pulsars, and the ones discovered back in 1967 as well, and also the ones that are actually relatively easily visible with an amateur radio telescope, are the so-called rotation-powered pulsars. Here, the pulse itself is actually not in visual light, it's in radio waves, which is actually exactly what you could see if you were to build your own radio telescope and were to look in the middle of a typical nebula such as the famous Crab Nebula. Unlike accretion-based or magnetically-based pulsars, here the energy itself comes from the very, very minute decreases in the rotation speed of the pulsar. In other words, as the pulsar rotates and reduces its rotation by just a little bit, that reduction in rotation energy is transferred into radio pulses, so it essentially powers itself by slowing down. And because of this, with time these pulsars will actually slow down completely and probably stop spinning, but here we're talking about billions and billions of years in the future. 
But there obviously could be other types of neutron stars as well, such as the hypothetical quark stars or exotic matter stars as well. This is something that we haven't discovered, so we can't really know for sure. What we do know is that these three major types were the ones that we knew existed for sure. But the recent discovery that was only announced a few months ago and analyzed only a few weeks ago from when I'm making this video discovered a new type of a neutron star, a new type of a pulsar that seems to combine a little bit of everything from everything. Here is what the emissions from this pulsar known as G1818 looks like and this was discovered in March of 2020. And here is what this looks like using a telescope as well. This pulsar, surprisingly, is only about 240 years old, so this is actually the second youngest pulsar we've ever discovered after the famous recently discovered 1987A pulsar, which still doesn't really have a name, but that was recently confirmed as well. This one here would be about 33 years old, but we haven't seen the actual neutron star just yet, so it'll probably take time before we find it. Which of course makes the previously mentioned J1818 the youngest pulsar we can see right now. But what makes this interesting? Well, first of all, what you're looking at are the X-ray observations. So this is technically an X-ray pulsar. But the recent radio observations also discovered radio pulsations, meaning that it seems to be also uh, slowing down as well. It also seems to spin faster than other X-ray pulsars, with the single rotation here being about 1.33 seconds. And at the same time, it also seems to have properties of a typical magnetar. So there are a lot of really unusual features that this has that no other pulsar previously had. Which of course makes this discovery a little bit different and creates a problem for us because we're not going to be able to classify it very easily. But because this is a young pulsar, maybe that's where the answer is. Maybe this is how all of the pulsars start their lives and eventually evolve to become one of the other classifications we've seen before. At least that's one of the potential answers for now. The only way we'll be able to definitively answer this is once we're able to start seeing the neutron star in the middle of the supernova remnant from 1987. When we see this neutron star, we'll hopefully be able to get some sort of an answer here. But this is actually not really that surprising, because in the last few years we had a lot of advances when it comes to neutron stars, and for the first time ever, for example, we were even able to see the surface of the pulsar far, far away. This was using the nicer observatory on the International Space Station, and what's really weird here is that we were able to see two sides of the pulsar at the same time, simply because of the way that the light is bent around the neutron stars. You can learn more about this in one of the previous videos I made on the channel. So it really shouldn't come as a surprise for us to discover more mysteries about pulsars and about neutron stars as we look around the night skies and see more unusual objects out there. It's actually quite likely we'll find even more unusual neutron stars out there, such as for example this one right here that was discovered a few years ago that seems to illuminate its own partner and create unusual flashes on its surface. So these neutron stars and these pulsars are just really strange beasts. But at the same time, by studying neutron stars, we're learning so much about quantum physics and about other really unusual properties of the universe and can apply this to some of the things here on the planet. But I guess until we learn more about pulsars or neutron stars or until we discover another unusual one, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. You can find the paper I mentioned in the description below and all of the other relevant material is there as well. I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. You can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.